kind of garlic do you have? Do you know the variety? Red. Fla fancy red? Okay. I'm a president of Crossroads Resource Center in Minneapolis. I do studies of local farm and food economies around the United States. And I'm really using those economic figures to make a case that the economy we have is leaking dollars rapidly. And it's something that really requires us to think differently about food to reclaim that possibility. I do the work that I do because I think that everyone in the society needs to, the chance to eat really, really good food. Residents of the Twin Cities spend $8 billion a year buying food. And even though we're in one of the top 10 states, farm states of the U.S., we spend about $7 billion of that buying food that's sourced outside of the state. And that comes from places we often don't know the practices the farmers use. We don't actually know the farm. One of the results of the industrial food system is that people really get separated from each other. We have people working in factories. We have people working in farms. We have boxes of food that come to a store. And you can basically make all those transactions without ever talking to anybody for more than 20 seconds. People are very hungry to know where their food came from. And farmers are telling me they want to actually know the customer that eats their food. They're tired of putting stuff on a truck and having it disappear forever. They want to actually have a relationship at the end of the day. We spend less on food than most other countries that are in the industrialized world. But it really isn't cheap when you look at the long-term outfall of that. We have a huge obesity and diabetes epidemic in this country. And the medical cost is $174 billion a year. We also lose 3,000 people a year to food poisoning in the United States. We lose that many people every year because of having food that's tainted or we're just not smart enough to handle it safely at our own homes. The relationships we form around trading food, around feeding ourselves well, around exercising better, around developing a much more healthy lifestyle for ourselves, we need to do that to really have a thriving economy again. If you come to a place like this farmer's market, you have a real chance of knowing the farmer, asking them how they produce their food, learning about whether they're certified, organic or not, or whether, what their sustainable practices might be. Actually, this is really crucial for economic development. You need some place where people can meet each other and develop relationships and learn how to do other, other deals together. It's really important to remember that in, this, in the history of St. Paul, we had a farmer's market in St. Paul before we had a state of Minnesota. It was that crucial for having a place for trade to happen, for farmers to make a living, but also for people to see each other and have that kind of sense of civic space where people could work together. This is Mississippi Market in St. Paul where I'm a member and one of the reasons I shop here is that I have a, a share of this store so it feels like when I'm buying here I'm buying something to help support my future in food as well. We have 10% of the food co-ops in the country are here in Minnesota. It's a really thriving force, and they're trying to now expand to about 500 food stores nationally that will be cooperatively owned. What we had to do was develop local trucking services, local distribution me methods that really allowed produce from local farms to come all the way from Wisconsin, southern Minnesota, northwest of the Twin Cities, into the metropolitan market. We didn't have those 40 years ago in very reliable ways. This is a product, Last Night o Kale, that you really couldn't find at stores when I was young. Nobody was eating it, um, except for very small, specific ethnic markets, but now it's very present. In the last year, I visited farms in Georgia and Indiana that have wonderful melons, and these melons from southwest Wisconsin are the best ones I've had all year. Um, they're not just local, but actually they're, they're a higher quality, much richer, deeper red, and also sweeter flavor. When our growers come in and we get to have that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, you can definitely tell that they see the co-op as an asset. You know, we really help to get their name out there and they in turn help us with uh, the best quality foods that they have to offer. The gentleman that just dropped the mushrooms off, Mike Kempinich from the Mycology store, and he actually spells it M-I-K-E-ology, Mycology store. He's been foraging and collecting wild mushrooms and cloning them and growing them, um, cultivating them indoors and also selling us foraged wild mushrooms and the mushrooms that we just got in was a, a wild crafted lobster mushroom and typically we buy these mushrooms you know from out west west coast Oregon they ship over here and they come in and you know at a fairly decent quality but to be able to get this stuff directly from somebody who's growing it in the state the difference in quality is just vast and we're able to get it actually for a comparable price for us too it's great to actually have access to this because they're really really good mushrooms. We work really hard to bring in food from the five state region. That's uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, the D Dakotas, and Iowa. 
We feel good about that because it supports the local food economy and the local economy at large. Um, I feel lucky to be able to share that with our members and our shoppers. A lot of the stores that now feature local foods would not have done that if someone hadn't thought 40 years ago to make that opportunity possible. Supporting some growers, even though they were small and struggling, to really learn how to produce food better and to really scale up to where they could really meet a metropolitan market demand. We spend $1.2 trillion a year buying food in this country. It's an amazing amount of money we spend buying food. That's more money than we needed to bail out the banking system a few years back. It's, it's quite a bit of money. Nothing in the economy involves people as richly as food does because we're all eating, we're all required to eat. We all can actually, across party lines, across regional lines, we can learn how to do this better together. And now we have to translate that into, into the policy arena because now we have enough consumer power to make that really work on a commercial scale. But I think at this point, legislators haven't been convinced of the need to do this. I think they see it as really good when people buy fresh vegetables, but they don't necessarily see themselves playing a role. The entire food system we have assumes that oil will be cheap. The more fuel costs rise, the more vulnerable we are in Minnesota for having a healthy food supply. This could be the first time in history that Minnesota really sets to roll up its sleeves and say, how do we really create lasting infrastructure that really will allow us to count on having enough food from local sources for everybody to eat well every year? Make it 250. <laughs> I would argue that only the state of Minnesota can really afford the resources needed to, to do some of the planning to make sure that we produce enough food, we have enough farmland set aside so we'll guarantee ourselves that we can produce all the food that every Minnesotan needs to eat every year in a reliable way. Okay, thank you very much. Same to you. Come check out the St. Paul Farmers Market new satellite location right in front of the state capitol located on Martin Luther King Boulevard. You can find us here every Friday from 10.30 to 1.30. You find a variety of locally grown products sold to you by the grower. So come check us out.